received any comments from the community for public comment. Good evening, President Stonecipher. We have no written comment. We do have one individual signed up to speak. Mr. Kunzler, please remember to hit star six to unmute yourself and please remember you are no longer muted. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. All right, let's get this let's get this party started. Uh, Jill Kunzler here. I'm a Skagit County resident. I'm about to become a regular Everett Transit and Community Transit writer again. Uh, tonight is the night to rethink transit. Tonight, the Everett City Council is going to receive a clear presentation on the future of Everett Transit. This is the clutch moment here. Um, we've known back to at least 2015 that Everett Transit has been under-resourced in providing the connectivity that riders like I expect. Uh, that's not the fault of the employees, but the electeds and the electorate who have not voted to properly fund a new network. How, there is an option to provide that connectivity to all of Everett and Payne Field, and that is growth through consolidation. Some say that $0.12 cents on $10 on a taxable purchase is too much to ask, but when you can't connect to Point B without a $10 or $15 lift or Uber, that becomes prohibitive. Plus, with Everett Transit getting more battery electric buses, more should be, have zero emission transit. Having community transit provide the backroom support with the growth through consolidation, with Everett City Council adding service under the Everett Transit brand, with Everett Transit labor contracts, and more transit, more places, more often, is not a fantasy, but a distinct possibility. I would encourage all parties, all parties, to look at Seattle's Proposition 1, funding for transit and related transportation needs as a possible outcome and the one Joe Kunzler supports. You see, I don't consider acceptable as an American accepting 10 years to grow transit when we can grow the same amount of transit in two in appropriate response to a climate emergency. Thanks. I also find this SD3 realignment conversation anger inducing when we need to accelerate transit product delivery in response to a climate emergency. So please consider your legal options. Finally, we need to connect all of Payne Field and that requires one integrated transit network via growth for consolidation, please. I do want to stress that there, you know, that there are that some agreements that Ever Transit Community Transit signed that make it very difficult to connect certain facilities at the main field like the future of flight to reliable frequent transit and it's, it's a major problem in my mind. So that's one of the reasons why I'm supporting this. Thank you for hearing me out as we get fierce in the clutch because the clutch moments now Let's get to what, what's, I'm looking forward to the presentation tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for your comments. President Stonecipher, those are all I have signed up to speak this evening. Phase two, final report and project update. And I think we have Tom Hinkson here to make this presentation this evening. Yes, good evening, Council, President Stone Cipher, and Mayor Franklin. Tonight you get the final report. Uh, I want to let you know that with us is our lead consultant, Tim Payne of Nelson Nygaard, and also Roland Behe, representing Community Transit. And I want to thank the, the team for the diligent work that they've done and all the sub consultants, and I also especially want to thank Richard Terry, who about a year ago took on the leadership and guidance of this project when Paul Kaptansky retired. It wasn't on his work program for 2020, and we really thank him for his, uh, his diligence in it. We started this process, um, well, here we go. So our plan for tonight, we'll do a brief history. I know it's late, so we won't spend a lot of time there. I do want to give you an update on the results of our second phase outreach. And we have some revised financial forecasts and some new information for you that is really quite recent. We'll talk about some next steps and then have some discussion. So we started this process in 2019. The financial projections presented included budget effects of the I-976, but not the unforeseen pandemic. Council then agreed to conduct this analysis of the three options for the future of transit in Everett. 
And in phase one, we shared information broadly throughout Snohomish County about Rethink Transit. And in phase two, we focused outreach on community members who would be directly affected by transit service changes under the three options. This phase targeted Everett residents, community organizations, businesses, and transit users who travel in or to and from Everett. The uh, second phase of the outreach gave much more detailed information on what a current funding or growth and a growth through consolidation scenario would mean to the customers. And without going into all the detail, just a quick reminder, current funding is a very moderate growth on whatever type of uh, sales tax increase or, or growth percentage that, that we experience. Uh, but the sales tax would stay at six tenths of one percent. The growth was about a 10 year plan for growth. It would increase the sales tax uh, to nine tenths of one percent, which is a three tenths of one percent increase. And it would give us a program that was about 140,000 hours by 2036. The growth through consolidation was a sales tax increase of six tenths of one percent of doubling our current sales tax. It would give us the growth that we would see in 10 years under the growth uh, program. We could see that growth in as little as two years after the sales tax increase. And uh, it would also give us financial security for growing transit service as the city continued to grow in the years beyond to uh, 2036. We can go to everyone. Phase two outreach included an online open house and survey distribution of project materials and printed surveys, uh, briefings, virtual events, and media ads. Significant efforts were made to reach transit riders and Spanish speaking community members through translated materials, digital and print, briefings, coordination with community organizations and on bus surveys. And here's some of the statistics. We had 20 posters in English, Spanish and Russian distributed in public spaces and transit service areas. We printed fact sheets with the survey in English, Spanish and Russian and distributed uh, through multicultural businesses, public spaces, and transit locations, had print and digital ads in five local and regional publications. We had articles in more than 10 local and regional publications and blogs, more than 30 social media posts via Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn posts through both Everett Transit and, and Community Transit, and also the City of Everett social media outlets. Seven Facebook stories were posted uh, through the Everett Transit social media account, uh, and about uh, 2,300 people viewed those stories. More than seven text rider alerts from Everett Transit, Community Transit, and the City of Everett. For that, we see participation of more than 1,250 uh, online visitors to our open house. We had 433 survey responses, approximately 1,100 views of the Facebook live uh, stream recording and 28 comments with five shares. More than 15 stakeholder groups were provided with project information, the link to the online open house and survey, and an opportunity to meet with project staff. Project staff met virtually with 12 stakeholder groups to discuss the project, ask questions, and provide comments, including one meeting conducted in Spanish. Uh, we learned from uh, the areas that we weren't able to get as much information in the first uh, cycle of survey and put extra effort into the second cycle. To increase the engagement among the Hispanic and Latino populations, phase two outreach targeted Spanish speaking communities through print and digital material translations and direct outreach to organizations. In spite of these efforts, the rate of survey participation uh, who 
of people who re self reported as Hispanic or Latino was about 6.5%, which is notably lower than the about 16% uh, population living in the city of Everett, as reported by the US Census. It's worth noting that this extra effort that we had did result in better performance from phase one to phase two, but not nearly as much as we had hoped. And this, uh, we learned that the online experience is particularly difficult for some communities to participate. And we are hoping that face-to-face uh, -face meetings in the future will help uh, mitigate this. So about a quarter of our phase two respondents reported an annual household income of greater than $100,000. But as we learned earlier today, that may not actually be nearly as much money as we thought. Uh, more than 50% of the respondents reported annual incomes of uh, over the median average for the city of Everett, 54,562. Among the respondents who reported using Everett Transit Service relatively more uh, reported incomes of between 30,000 and 75,000, which pretty much represents the, uh, a large portion of our ridership. The survey results indicate support for improved transit in Everett. The results do not, however, show there is a clear sense of how people want to see that occur. Respondents were asked to rank the three options in order of importance. From this ranking, the growth through consolidation option was ranked highest most often, and the growth option ranked second highest most often. The results among respondents who were residents of Everett was very similar to the overall response. The current funding option compared to the other options was ranked First, the least often, second in the middle, and last, the most often. Which speaks to a dissatisfaction with the current state. Respondents were, who preferred this option expressed opposition to raising taxes, described the difficulty of paying taxes during the pandemic, uh, and suggested raising fares to fund transit might be an alternative to a sales tax increase. The growth option compared to the other options was ranked first, the second most often, second, the most often, and last, the least often by a two to one ratio. People who preferred this option were concerned that a merger would mean Everett losing control over decision making and local service, People who preferred this and the current funding option were concerned that a merger would reduce paratransit and service in underserved areas. Respondents who preferred this or the growth through consolidation option desired more affordable fares. Finally, the growth through consolidated option compared to the other options was ranked first, the most often, second, the least often by three to one ratio and last as often as the growth option was ranked first. This was clearly the most polarized preference. People either really like this idea or they really don't like this idea. The respondents who ranked this option first noted the need for more frequent and widespread transit service, improved interregional connections and transfers, and more efficient use of resources. Respondents who rarely or never use transit were more likely to prefer this option. And those who ranked it last expressed concerns about fares, paratransit, governance, and the amount of taxes and sales tax. There are still many questions that need to be addressed if a consolidated system option is preferred and before we would be comfortable presenting this option to the voters. Some are misconceptions that can be addressed through education and others represent larger policy decisions and how they will affect the customers. And although we made marginal progress in connecting with our Hispanic and Latino community, it is clear that face-to-face -face conversations will be far more productive than the online experience. 
and we will need to tailor our future efforts with that in mind. Now, a lot has happened since we began this discussion two years ago, and some things really haven't changed too much. In 2019, Transit was looking at a significant shortfall and even cut 12% of its service to help manage the system. Operating reserves were nearing an all-time low, and the comment that Transit was circling the drain was not uncommon. There was legitimate urgency to study our options. Then COVID hit, and Transit took immediate action to protect employees, reduce risk, and establish a sustainable system. Better than anticipated revenues and two one-time boosts from the federal government helped rewrite the ship, and we moved into 2021 with a longer view of sustainability, but with a significantly reduced system. A system that did not meet the current demand, could not adequately serve our most transit dependent population and essential workers. Now, recently, we were awarded $8.8 .8 million from the Carissa Fund to help cover labor and benefits, and we begun reimbursing ourselves for expenses occurred since last June. Later this year, we anticipate another large distribution, at least as much as Carissa, from the ARP fund also to be used for labor and benefits. Now, these federal dollars do not require a local match and will allow us to set aside a portion of our regular sales tax revenue for some restoration of service uh, this fall and to address several delayed capital projects, including replacing aging diesel buses with electric buses and replacing our vehicle wash system. This also allows us additional time before council must make a decision on either the growth or the growth through consolidation option. This slide is uh, from Paul Kaftansky's slide deck from December 2019 and reminds us of the stark differences and implications of the three options. And while there is real advantage to Everett residents in a consolidated system, there are also negative impacts to the city's general fund due to the loss of Everett Transit's contribution. We have a lot of work ahead of us, and we use this uh, Gantt chart to illustrate a proposed timeline to help us keep on track. As I mentioned earlier, we'll provide some modest service increase this fall. Transit will look at the sales tax trend and if possible, add more service in March, but we will not add service that is not sustainable. Uh, we're asking for council to continue the discovery and deliberation process through 2024 with a decision to go to a vote by 2024 for either the growth or the growth through consolidation option. And that would allow us to implement the voters' wishes by September 2026. The fundamental question of long-term sustainability remains. Is Everett Transit sustainable under the growth scenario? And will the amount of growth be sufficient to serve a light rail community? This chart shows a sustainable growth and expense scenario through 2036, presuming a three-tenths of 1% sales tax increase in 2026. It appears that we can sustain a system of about 140,000 hours, or not quite twice our current service levels, through 2040, about when the new estimated time for light rail uh, would get to Everett. The 140,000 hour service level is equivalent to what we assumed was attainable in the growth scenario by 2030, but since we would be implementing a sales tax later, uh, we would not see that fully uh, fleshed out until 2036. Still, by 2036, Everett would need to reassess its future as an independently operated system and 140,000 hours, which sounds like a lot, is far short of the expected need for more of more than 200,000 hours to support a light rail community. 
and briefly what that would look like and what it would help um, illustrate this is right now we have service one route operates every 15 minutes most of our service operates more uh, less frequently than every 30 minutes and we still have some routes that operate only every 60 minutes and even though as mentioned earlier tonight many people have bus stops right in front of their house or a very short distance from their house if that bus doesn't arrive more frequently than once an hour that will not be their choice of transportation while it gives us some relief to know that Everett Transit is sustainable, it also illustrates that the growth expected to support a light rail community is not achievable with a nine-tenths of 1% sales tax. The best long-term option appears to be consolidation, which leverages a larger entity with a historically stronger rate of sales tax growth to serve the transport transportation needs of the county's largest city and the eventual northern terminus of link light rail. However, presuming the growth option is implemented by 2026, the city could delay a decision to merge until 2036 or seek legislative relief to the sales cap, uh, sales tax cap of nine tenths of 1% to allow Everett Transit to grow enough to serve a light rail community by 2041. In the interim, Council could monitor the rate of sales tax growth to assure that tax revenues or predicted tax revenues meet or exceed the growing cost of operations. Ultimately, we know the voters will determine how much transit they want and how much they are willing to pay, and we will respond accordingly. Transit will continue to address customer needs as best we can within the constraints of a 36 bus fleet. As funds allow, we can add service to weekends, evenings, and off-peak hours without increasing the fleet, and there is still a lot of unmet need in those areas. Transit will update its long-range plan in 2022, and that will help further define system needs and capabilities by 2041. And with the opportunities to meet person to person again, we anticipate a robust public input process to help guide our decisions. Now, if council wants to further consider the growth through consolidation scenario, the questions we had previously raised remain to be clarified. There are just a few of these issues uh, we believe council uh, should explore and resolve before recommending a consolidated system. How will Everett's interests be represented on the Community Transit Board? What does the proposed service network look like for Everett's residents? Should be clarification on fares and clarification on paratransit service. But we should remember that the concept of merging two mature transit systems is unprecedented in our region. And just as Council is currently examining a regional fire authority, Council might consider a steering committee to work with community transit to discover a path to consolidation or to determine that consolidation is not the preferred option. The fundamental question remains, what is the best transit solution for Everett as we become a light rail community? The sooner we make this decision, the better choices we can make regarding future capital projects, such as base expansion, vehicle replacement, and replacement of our service facilities to support an all electric fleet. The question is not sustainability. There will always be ways to provide a minimum level of service within an unstable budget, but is that the service our residents need and deserve? We believe we have heard clearly from Council and those we surveyed that the status quo is not an acceptable option. Growth is desired and growth is needed. We appreciate Council's support and engagement throughout this study. While not forgetting the implications of the choices ahead, we recommend setting this aside for a season and resuming the conversation early next year 
when we can introduce our new council members to the subject and restart deliberations toward a final decision no later than 2024. And as my final thought, I want to remind you that transit in Everett has good bones. We're missing a rib or two, but what we really need is meat on those bones. And that looks like earlier and later service and service more frequently. And if we achieve that, we can help with the previous conversation in rethink housing, especially the parking discussion. It all fits together. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Let's see which council members have questions, starting with council member Roberts. Uh, thanks, uh, Council thanks. President Stonecipher. Tom, thanks for this report. Um, you know, I don't know that I have any questions. I really want to look at it more carefully, but I really appreciated the last comments that you made because as I was going through the material and listening to your presentation, I was thinking of this as a, uh, a the, the steps of the dance uh, are for us to get better information on what Sound Transit may be doing uh, to get to Everett and what those what that process looks like and what the timeframes look like. And then secondly, uh, moving forward in some next steps on rethink housing and then obviously connecting transit in non motorized systems together makes some sense. And so I couldn't help but think we'll be a little smarter in the next few months than we are right now. And I think you just hit exactly that. So I appreciate that comment. And I think that's where I'll end mine. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how these pieces do fit together and what the dance looks like once the choreography is complete. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Moore. Uh, yes, Tom. Sorry that I guess the sun's gone down. It's a little, a little dark here. Um, but nevertheless, I still have not, there's still some just fun, fundamental crossroads. And I realize that in the reality that I'm not seeking reelection, I still cannot part without the simple mathematic equation of a level, you, you pay for what you get. Fundamental, you pay for what you get. And the thing is, I think about friends with community transit and our participation. What you get for a transit sy system in, well, and let me ask you this, is this outgoing concept still true? The city of Everett can save money by combining with community transit because it is no longer a local tax burden associated with us, period. Now, this is a three-point statement. That's an assumption. So for us, it helps us balance our budget. But for our citizens as taxpayers, if they, at this point in time or in the near foreseeable future before, before light rail and a redynamic of um, driverless cars and everything else comes into play, given the circumstances we're in today, they can maintain the same level of service, neighborhood service, senior service, which is becoming more near dear to me, not in the near future, but not too long down the road. They can have better service by paying three cents, 0.3, uh, tens of a cents uh, in additional taxes, or they can pay double to go to community transit and get a lower level of service. So there is a crossroad at some point in time when we look at not about what it costs the city, but what it costs our taxpayers for the next four or five years until the dynamics of public transportation changes if we don't if we don't join community transit our citizens can get a higher level of service for half the tax increase half the tax increase 
because it's 0.3 or it's 0.6. And at a 0.6, there's a different set of um, extension of services, particularly to our seniors or those relying upon what we call paratransit. So I may be misguided, but is that statement relatively true until the dynamics of public transportation change? We've talked about this for many years and I wanna keep saying to our citizens, and you take that survey, you want to have a combined service, but for half the price, we can maintain the current level of service. For twice the price, you have a diminished level of service. This may be my parting words in terms of this concept, but when will that change? Because I believe, and I stand to be corrected, that that is still true. Is that a true statement? You're muted. There we go. I, I do not believe that that's entirely true. Uh, as as has been uh, expressed through the process of showing people what the growth or consolidation uh, service levels would be compared to the growth service levels, particularly in the shortest term within a couple of years versus 10 years, uh, community transit uh, emerge system would provide far more service for uh, twice the sales tax that that would be the case. But as I pointed out that if this was really an area that council wanted to pursue more closely, uh, and we would imagine that voters would want to see this, that to understand what that route network would actually look like uh, before you would commit to it would be an important process uh, moving forward. But the, uh, the models that we used uh, showed a much more robust network under the emerge system, then Everett Transit would be able to provide with the nine tenths. But, but you may be speaking to a robust system outside of our city boundaries. Within our city boundaries, there no. are areas without route service. Am I, I, I guess I'm wrong. I see. I, I know I listen, but maybe my ears are closed. I still am defending the access of the citizens within our boundaries and the assumption that if you're if you're out on the Muckleteal Boulevard or if you're out in a an area where there's not regular routes you don't have the same access to service that you would uh, within the Everett Transit system. Well as I and, and Roland Behe is online here he could uh, correct me if I'm wrong but when we use the modeling, community transit used our same long range plan as a as a basis to begin that modeling. And then they overlaid uh, the systems that they would believe would be uh, naturally extending out of the city, not not requiring a transfer at the city limits, as is often the case now. And so there actually is a very robust uh, route network very similar to what we would have in our long range plan. Um, so I, I don't believe that that we would be suggesting that we would accept something less than what we would currently be able to, well, what we would otherwise be able to provide ourselves. Okay, so at that point in time, when, when we look at that analysis, you know, and I may be talking uh, to the council rather than from the dias, I'll be interested in seeing uh, there's a very specific advantage to citizens that live in our city that they're benefiting. And so what would that look like at the same six tenths if we did it ourselves versus we've been talking about how to maintain it at three tenths. So I'd be interesting, interested to know that we're not transferring a tax burden and that our, I realize the regional connectivity would be better, but there's individuals here that just want to get to church. They just want to get from A to B. They just want to get to the grocery store. That's kind of what I'll be listening for when, mm -hmm. as this process goes forward and remembering that 
um, every citizen will benefit through our own ability to make sure that they're taken care of versus a regional capability. And believe me, I'm a community transit, transit fan, but we've been able to deliver a service for less and um, that's what I'll be listening for going forward. So please include that in future analysis. Will do, sir. Thank you, Council Member Murphy. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. Great presentation. Really appreciate the update and glad to hear about the financial uh, income from the Federal CARES Act grants and so forth. And glad to hear that's going to give us some breathing room and also ability to expand services again. And I really don't have any further questions at this point, but but thank you again. Thank you. Council Member Tui. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Council President. Um, Tom, I don't have any other questions um, at this point, um, but I do do look forward to us um, really analyzing this and making a recommendation on this for the staff as far as moving forward. And I personally would like to see us do it before the end of this year, just because the council members that we have are We've been so well educated over several years that it uh, it seems with new council members, it may take quite a bit of time to get up to speed. And I think the council members that uh, we have now are, um, are are really well well versed in in all this information. So that's just my recommendation on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Vogley. Yes, thanks, Tom. Fantastic. Um, I really did enjoy the very last snippet of your spiel and um, just the idea of being able to take transit and uh, rethink transit and put it in with rethink housing and rethink zoning because, you know, our city has many departments and we're all really trying to work together and know who each other are and how it can we can benefit our entire community mm -hmm. rather than just pieces of our community at any specific time. So thank you for that. Um, I do hear the recommendation that you put forward to have a commission or a committee or something that works with community transit and well, you knew it much better, but putting a group together to really evaluate what it would look like if we were to merge um, and what those routes would look like. You know, with um, Council Member Moore's discussion, um, it sounded like there's always already kind of a basic um, understanding, sort of, <laughs> at least an under, yeah, basic understanding of our route system then being improved upon with community transit. Um, so yeah, so I would like to see that type of a commission or committee or whatever it's called be put together to really um, understand that. And um, counter to Council Member Tui, I'm I'm on the fence about waiting or not because we do we have had a lot of information as this group me being the newest and um, we are somewhat well versed in it and things need to happen you know we've been pushing it off and pushing it off and we definitely need to get this done however um, with this whole new districts happening you know maybe it would behoove us to um, not necessarily, yeah, wait, you know, because there will be a lot of new um, thought and a lot of new uh, places represented. So um, just a whole new think tank, uh, which might be beneficial, you know, change. The only thing we can count on is change. <laughs> um, so I think that's, that's all I have. Um, no real particular questions. So thank you and I look forward to more. Thank you. 
Thank you. Council Member Bader. Thanks, Council President. Um, Tom, one thing I've been curious about, and I apologize, Council Member Moore, if someone else asked this question, but do, do we have the data uh, broken out by um, riders versus non riders in terms of their response to this, uh, the surveys and the community outreach? Yeah, yes, uh, we have a voluminous data. <laughs> and so if there's some specific data piece that you'd like us to to pull out for you, I'd be happy to do so. Gotcha. Well, I, I guess what I'm thinking about as we approach this decision is what is politically possible? And while I think there's support for generally support for more funding for Ever Transit, um, I think it's important for us to be attuned to what those who are likely to vote on this um, are saying. And I fear, or not fear is probably the wrong word, and I suspect that's skewed much more toward non-riders than riders. Um, just because the volume of, you know, even even if all riders voted, the, the, the number of riders is a percentage of the total number of voters is is much smaller. So at least for me in approach, approaching this decision, um, I, 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 I'd, I'd love to see that data. Um, the, I, and I guess part of what I, uh, I fear is the right word here is that we pr probably have a once in a generation or once in a half generation shot at putting this on the ballot. And if we reach too far and it gets rejected, we're probably stuck uh, as is for another 10 or 15 years before we really have a, the credibility or the ability to bring it back to the voters. So I think we got to get it right the first time. And my fear is if we overreach, um, if, if, if we overreach beyond what voters are likely to support, support then then um, this may have effort may have been all for naught. So I, I'd, I'd again like to see that data. And I think at some point, uh, if it's appropriate um, uh, to survey, uh, to get a scientific survey done of uh, ever residents uh, that, that is weighted toward those who are likely to vote um, to give us some assessment about that. Anyhow, that's what I request. That's the data I'd request, Tom. Thanks. That's all for me, Council President. Thank you. Um, well, I'll, I'll say on this, uh, Tom, thank you very much for your presentation. It's um, you know, kind of <laughs> the final report, I would say, and it tells us, you know, some new information, but nothing really that new, actually. Um, we've known that the community, we've had before feedback from the community that has said that the status quo is not acceptable. And, um, and I agree with the sentiment that, you know, it's probably not the writers that are going to, you know, that are going to approve the expansion of Everett Transit. Um, they're just that it needs to be supported by the rest of the community. And I think that we have a, a very unique, uh, we got lucky. The pandemic has given us this funding source that has allowed us now to kind of live another day. And I feel an urgency to start the work of figuring out what we're going to do with this agency. When I think of adding 60,000 new people in our community, uh, we're talking about adding density into our neighborhoods. And we recognize that we that parking is a huge issue. Um, I don't think that we can grow in a way that will maintain our quality of life if we don't have a well-functioning transit system. And whether that is us doing it on our own and going it alone, I agree with Council Member Moore, you get what you pay for and probably the cost is the same. And so I think that they, what we really need, whether we are gonna uh, tax ourselves to provide the level of service that our community wants or needs versus uh, going into um, cooperation or cooperative agreement of some sort with community transit probably end up costing very similar to the same cost. There, I'm sure there's some economies of scale and management and, and uh, at the top level and, and middle management, but 
at the end of the day, it's probably not a ton. And so I am not inclined to say, let's wait and allow our political cycle to dictate the work that we need to do to create a system that works for our residents and, and taxpayers. I think we need to get going on this right away. And if we have a, an idea of putting together a study group, some kind of planning advisory group that would um, look at this option, I think we need to get that going yesterday. Uh, we've we've got a very narrow window of time that this funding will allow us to increase our service, and we need to figure out what we're doing. We've been, um, you know, kind of humming along and trying to wring in our hands and hoping that something will change, and it's not changing. Uh, we're going to come out of this pandemic. There's going to be a growth boom. We're already seeing a lot of development in our community, and our transportation system can't can't support it. So I, um, you know, I would ask my council colleagues what we're waiting for. Uh, nothing is going to change between now and January when we seat a new council. And in the meantime, we've got precious time that we can be using to get some of the information together that we need, you know, likely for that group to make the decision. But we've, we've got to start gathering that information now. So um, my thought is let's, Let's move forward with the planning commission, put together the study group and uh, start taking some uh, steps toward getting the information we need to make important decisions. It's, um, it's just, it's lingered too long and it's too important, I think, to our long-term development as a city. So council president, this is Nick Harper um, <clears throat> on behalf of uh, the mayor's office. Um, yeah, I'll defer to obviously your colleagues to comment and certainly our transit director, uh, Tom Hinkson. Um, but yeah, if, if if that's the direction that that there's a collective interest in going in, we will certainly uh, coordinate with community transit and come back with a proposal on what a, a, you know, a planning committee could look like in terms of at least exploring what these options are. Uh, so, uh, we fulfill kind of the, the comments you have laid out. Yeah, I, I mean, I would be uh, interested to hear from my council colleagues and who anyone who would like to comment, please open up your camera and let me know. This is uh, council, Councilman Tui, and I, um, as I stated earlier, I really felt that we needed to, we've been studying this for several years now, and I agree with you wholeheartedly that I just think we just need to to really get to the finish line. I think we're very, very close. And, um, you know, we may not make a final decision before the end of the year, but I think we can finish gathering the information that is needed to make that decision. And uh, I, I think we should we should move forward with it. And the study group is great. Um, I would I would fully support that. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Me too. This is Council Member Vogley. I, I concur, Thanks. Roberts. Bader is yes as well, as long as we're not going to tax the staff beyond their ability to move forward. And um, uh, any, yeah, that, that's my sentence. Yeah, Council Member Murphy, I'm on board with uh, moving forward expeditiously as well. Thanks for for the suggestion. Thank you. So uh, I don't know what what timeline that puts us on, but I would love to have uh, administration come back and let us know, you know, what the composition of a study group would be. And I'd certainly love to talk a little bit about the scope of work that that group will um, be doing, but would ask for administration to bring that forward to us so that we can consider um, the types of people that we would want to serve on that. Obviously, we want to make sure that our um, uh, represented employees are have a representation on any kind of study group and um, and council and citizens and and uh, administrative people that um, would look forward to hearing from from our administration on how to move forward on this front. Thank you, Council President. This is yeah, Nick Harper again. I will uh, 
to coordinate obviously with the mayor and with our Everett Transit Director Tom Hinkson and we will um, work with uh, community transit's leadership to bring a proposal and plan back to the council here uh, with haste. Great, thank you. Um, that brings us to the end of our scheduled agenda. Um, I'll just, we're gonna move to executive session, but I'd first like to tell uh, anyone listening that um, if you'd like to provide comments for our future council meeting, we encourage you to do so. Uh, you can provide them in writing before the meeting to council at everettwa.gov. Um, all comments received will become part of the public record. Um, there are numbers listed here. There are also listed on the city website at www.everettlaw.gov backslash city council. If you wish to participate provi by providing public comment at the meeting on June 16th, uh, we ask you to call at 6 p.m. for the 6.30 meeting. Call the number 425-616-3920. Conference ID for that meeting is 161-945-673 pound. Um, we're now going to move into executive session. It's expected to last.